If part and parcel of forgiveness is removal of moral guilt, then human beings can't do that. What, what we can do is kind of desist from contempt of a person who has done something contemptible, right? Or we can pull away from hostility toward that person. But we can't remove their guilt. And yet that, I think, is the heart of forgiveness. So what's needed for forgiveness to happen is to unstick <laughs> that wrongdoing from the doer. It's almost like when somebody does a wrongdoing, it's almost like somebody tattoos that on their, well, maybe not forehead, but somewhere on them, right? <laughs> and that's forever associated with that person. Forgiveness means erasing that tattooed thing on the person, right? Giving that person, so to speak, a new life without that burden of guilt that lies on the, on the person. And so, somehow God must, only God can do that. Now, how does God do that? Um, well, it, it takes a miracle to do that. It takes a miracle to separate the doer from the deed. And the miracle that takes place goes something like this. The doer dies and is resurrected as a new person. And the way the doer dies and is resurrected as a new person is in that all have died in that Christ has died for all. So the mystery of forgiveness, if you want, is hidden in this act in which God not just took upon God's self the sin of the world, but in which all humanity vicariously died in Christ and then was raised with Christ. Now, I grant you, you've got to have quite a robust belief in God <laughs> in order to believe that that actually happened, right? My point is simply that if you think that forgiveness is desirable, deeply human, if you think that forgiveness should take place, something like that must take place. Somehow the deed must be separated from the doer, and I think that happens only through the death and resurrection then of the doer. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.